And um, today we're going to be installing a wetland filter. Now, let's <laughs> start over. <laughs> Just... Hey, Carl here with Columbia Water Gardens and today I'm working on an intake bay in Sedona, Arizona. I'm working on a project, it's not my project, it belongs to another contractor and this morning as we build the intake bay I want to kind of show you a couple of fundamentals, some really basic, fast, easy ways to be able to build it without making it overly complicated. If this is for a big job, this is, uh, this is, this is basically the same thing as a normal pond scummer that you're going to see in your typical 8x11 or 11x13 backyard pond. But this is not your typical backyard pond. Take a look at this. So I want to show you, I want to start off with just basically um, our shelf. These two pumps are going to be powered by external pumps. Uh, and so when we're building this intake bay, we're going to build it a little bit on the low side and we're gonna have a lot of heavy gravel and we're gonna have a lot of spillways to be able to get down to this lower level here. And I wanna show you a couple basic fundamentals. Number one, we're using two Aquascape uh, pondless waterfall vaults. And I wanna have both of these guys dead on level with each other, which we've done. So as we've over excavated, we've backfilled with sand just to be able to allow us to kind of get these guys nice and clean and level with each other. It's also important that these guys are level with, uh, level with the grade. And as you can see, I mean, we're pretty doggone close. It's, it's, it's within horseshoes and hand grenades, really. It's close enough to be able to work. What we want to be able to do is set our underlayment down, set our liner down, and then any grade adjustments that we're going to be making, we're going to be making that with gravel on top. Instinctively, you may want to like cut a channel right in between here. Completely unnecessary, especially since we're going to be uh, backfilling with gravel here. Just cut your channel out. Let it do what it's gonna do, and don't waste the liner that's gotta come up and over and back down. It's a total and complete waste of time. Later on in this video, hang on with me. I'm gonna show you just a couple of really quick, couple of quick tips so that you know how to put this thing together yourself. One last thing I wanna remind you of, I've already stated in the video already, is, is that these are going to be powered by external pumps. So we put our plumbing in and our check valves inside this and we put our lid on, there's literally no reason whatsoever to go back inside these guys ever again. And one last thing, the spacing that we have in between the vaults, that's so that we can set boulders in between, still gain access if we need to for whatever reason, but for the most part, these guys are gonna completely be hidden away once we're done. So the next step, and this is absolutely the most critical part of setting aqua blocks, is making sure that the aqua blocks are absolutely perfectly level with each other. And I'm gonna show you why. Come down here. You see how level these guys are here? Aqua blocks get their strength from being, from being compacted um, on the sides, on the sides, on the sides, and from these guys being absolutely level with each other. Come over here, look at this. This is absolutely unacceptable you see this it has to be perfectly level but flush. only what flush yeah perfectly flush but thank you that's my cameraman joe so the only way that we're going to get this perfect perfectly flush is by creating a nice clean solid base for these guys to sit on top of a fast way just a really quick assembly tip that's going to save you a lot of time instead of focusing so much on what's underneath the liner let's just focus on what we can control what's on top of the liner so what we did is we've got some very thick rock pad. Look at the difference in width between this and, well, shoot, I don't have, it's, this is like twice the three times the thickness of regular underlayment. So we're putting the intake bay and all the rock and everything else right on top of this for two reasons. One, water's not gonna flow through here. It's gonna maybe clog over time, but preventing the flow, which is what we need, for our 24 inch spillways that so we're gonna have several 24 inch wide spillways for the water to be able to go through those channels down into the into the aqua blocks into the vault like and into the wetland like all right so what i'm doing now is i the aqua blocks are gonna be on top of this foot of this pump vault so i'm gonna level off to to outside where the aqua blocks are gonna sit so right now i got a pipe right here and i'm gonna level this off right here It'll sit like that. Then when gravel comes in here, I'm just gonna get my screed and just screed along this pipe all the way that back there with gravel. Then once we set the aqua blocks on there, they'll be perfectly level. 
seated on top of here, and it'll on top will be perfect. Hey Joe, you've you've installed quite a few uh, pump faults. What do you think about backfilling the way that we're backfilling? What do you think? I think it locks it in. You don't have to worry about bringing sand, bringing the liner, and all that good stuff. This works out perfect. This is saving time. Tons of time. Tons and of what time. is time? Time is money. Right. So what a lot of people don't take into consideration is, is that as much as I'm an artist, I'm a businessman first. So two things have to happen. One, we've got to be able to build your pond and build it right. And it's got to look good, right? So those are all encompassed into one. And number two, I got to turn a profit. Turning that profit makes sure that I'm here for you in the future so that if you ever need another water feature or if you've got problems or whatever the case is, that I'm here for you. And that is a really important thing to take into consideration when you're hiring a contractor. What do you think, Joe? How are we looking down here? Well, I just gotta lift this up just a hair. Just a hair. You guys need this plug? Looking good? Yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna get there right now. All right, so pro tip for you guys. So what we did right here, this gravel is a little too small for uh, these pump vaults. So what we did, we, we put this bigger uh, three inch to three inch to six, roughly, to allow the flow of water to go in here, and not the smaller gravel not to block the flow. So that's what we did right here, and then we put this pipe that's level to these vaults. We're gonna put the gravel right here for the aqua blocks. We have the aqua blocks marked right here. They're gonna sit flush. Then we're gonna pick up this uh, underlayment and lock it in. We screen it off the pipes. Now we put our rocket blocks down right here. They're on, sitting on top of the pump bolts. And now you can see, very minute, minute. They're pretty, they're as flush as we can get them. And that's how you get it done. One time, one time take, it's done. You're perfectly level, ready to rock and roll for the intake bay. Okay, so at this point, this is where all your artistry has come in, and I'm gonna kind of show you how it all comes together. Now, it's up to you how you're going to um, rock this in. In this particular case, what we did is, is we chose to do a framer stone. Framer stone is stacks laid up the center. That accomplished two things. One, um, it's really highly artistic, and this pond is, um, is, is I, the best way I can describe it is, is um, modernistic. This is a very modernistic, very uh, symmetrical pond with the landscape behind the hills. So. As you see the, the, the hillside in the background, we also have all these stacked sedimentary layers. So this pond really mimics a lot of what you see in the background. So of course it just makes sense to have your intake bay do kind of the same thing. So come on in here, I wanna show you a couple things real quick here. And then we're just gonna kind of wrap up this uh, construction real quick. Number one, this has a double inlet and as a double inlet, we wanted to make sure that the flow was coming over these uh, these two, I'm gonna call them spillways, because the water is coming in and spilling down. We wanna make sure that the water is coming over these spillways at the same height. So this string, um, we wrapped around the boulders, and now we've got this string line that is very, very accurate. Now, you see these little areas right over here where the top is kind of poking up, like this area right here? This is still two inches below waterline, and all this is gonna do is kind of create this really cool like turbulence in the water as the water goes in. I'm pretty sure the flow rate around here, total dynamic head is gonna be around 22,000 gallons an hour, kind of around there, uh, because we have two 12,000 gallon per hour pumps, minimal head pressure, three inch line. So we're, we, there, we should be maximizing the flow up into the, the wetland filter. So coming around the other side of this, it's okay to kind of get a little creative, um, use a lot of foam inside here, tuck things in, be as artistic as you can. I put this rock here also intentionally because this opening here is much wider than this opening here. And again, this really creates an awful lot of turbulence. Come on over here, check this out. Same thing over here on this side. So this is our second spillway, much larger than the first. 
Now, here's a fun fact for you real quick. Water flows at the rate of 100 gallons per hour per horizontal inch at a quarter of an inch tall. So what that means is, is that if you have a 24 inch wide spillway, which is what we have here, those 24 inch wide spillways easily said at a quarter of an inch is 2,400 gallons per hour. So at one inch, two, four, six, eight, eight, 16, 24, 32, that at, at, at one inch, we're almost at max flow. Two inches above water line or below water line gives us all the forgiveness we need to be able to have a nice gentle flow in. What we don't want to do is, is we don't want to have so much water being pulled out of the intake bay that we don't have the water flowing in fast enough. The other thing that we want to make sure that we do is, is we want to make sure that we're blocking the horizontal direction of flow into the intake bay. Let me show you what we did. Come on over here. Earlier on in the video, I showed you how we use pipe and we use the level to be able to level off the aqua blocks. These, these aqua blocks are absolutely dead on perfect all the way across. And their stability comes from reinforcing them from the side. So you see all this three quarter inch crush, all of that is providing the uh, stability for these aqua blocks. Now we can put weight on them. Now, what we don't want to do is we don't want to backfill this with small gravel like this. Hang on. I had this staged over here. What we don't want to do is we don't want to backfill it with stuff like this. You see how small these are? These are like two to three inches, right? Um, the problem with this is, is that biomass will accumulate over the top of this and eventually it'll clog your intake. If your intake clogs, then the flow into your pump is restricted. And if we restrict the flow into your pump, then what ends up happening is that your pumps, they're going to burn out. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to use much larger guys. Okay. Stuff along this size here. And as you can see, these guys here will allow more water to flow through than say, for example, these guys here. Does that make sense to you? I hope it does. Now, the only thing that's left in this intake bay, this construction of it is, is just to basically start filling it in. We're gonna do that. You don't need to see that. Um, two last tips. Come on over here. I'm gonna finish that off with you. Um, when you slide on your, um, your vault extensions, don't forget to plug off the holes on the bottom. Use something creative, you can Gorilla Tape, it works just fine. It's not gonna go anywhere, it sticks. Another thing that you could do is maybe you could take some underlayment and just wrap it around it and tape the underlayment and then put your rocks down. Anything that you can do to get creative to keep the rocks from wanting to go in through the sides. That's it. This is about as textbook perfect as it gets. Earlier in the video, you also saw us wrapping the, um, uh, the aqua blocks. We did wrap it with two layers of very thick um, rock pad. Water can't really flow through that. Water's gonna take the path of least resistance. It's not gonna come in horizontally, even if there are cracks in the front of the, um, of the wall that haven't been filled in with foam. Um, it's gonna wanna try to come in, but it's really not gonna have much of a chance to really go anywhere. So we did a really good job foaming the front of it. And even if we missed a spot or two, it's really not that big of a deal because it's just gonna hit it like a little bit of a wall with this gravel. This is providing resistance and it's the path of least resistance is gonna be coming right over the top. Listen guys, I hope you found this video helpful to you. If you have any questions about what we did here, please leave your comments down below. Um, I answer 100% of every comment that's left on my YouTube channel. And if you found this video by chance, do me a favor, if you like the video, just press the subscribe button. That's your way of saying thank you, man. I really appreciate what you did here. Um, another thing that you can do is, is you can share this video. So if you know of somebody that is building a pond or a pondless waterfall uh, or anything else that has any of the help that I'm giving on my channel that you find beneficial, share the video on social media. I'm Carl with Columbia Water Gardens, and this is it. I'm leaving Sedona, I'm going back home, and I'm here to remind you, Staying away from your wife from two weeks really, really sucks, but you can still be happy ponding.